नमस्ते पुंतांगर पुंतांबेकर साहब नमस्ते 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 Okay, Ram Gopal sir. I think we uh, we should start now. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Ram Gopal Nitharwal, and on behalf of Department of Biotechnology, Central University of Haryana, I welcome today's speaker, 
डॉक्टर नरेश एल सेलोकर एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ दिस वेबिनार आई ऑल्सो वेलकम डिस्टिंग्विस्ड फैकल्टीज प्रेजेंट हियर दिस इज आवर सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ द लेक्चर सीरीज दैट इज कॉल्ड लेक्चर सीरीज इन बायोटेक्नोलॉजी दिस सीरीज एम्स एट प्रोवाइड करेंट अपडेट्स ऑन कटिंग एज टेक्नोलॉजीज इन लाइफ साइंसेस now i invite professor satish kumar head of department biotechnology to introduce today's speaker over to you professor satish good morning friends am i audible yes sir okay good morning to everybody and it's a pleasure to have dr nareesh loka an eminent biotechnologist anyone biotechnologist and in continuation with the lecture series what this is the second lecture and we intend to do it more or less on weekly basis so naresh is going to speak us as you know buffalo cloning he is one of the pioneer team members starting with national dairy research institute and central institute for research on buffaloes and he is going to tell us about the buffalo cloning and rightly so india has been leading in the world in cloning of buffaloes though we were late to start with but during the last 10 years the country has picked up and they have come out with lot of innovation naresh has got long history in the field of buffalo cloning and he has contributed to optimize what they call it hand held hand made cloning techniques rather than using sophisticated equipment he is going to probably talk about the technique also a little bit that they have pioneered this hand held cloning technique and he has so many publications to his credit in this area and he has got so many awards nasi associate award 2020 nasi young scientist platinum jubilee award BST Sub Young Scientist Award Jawaharlal Nehru for outstanding thesis of ICR Best PhD Thesis Award by ICR and DRI and Professor Goya Young Award by Indian Society and many others. So he is one of those young budding scientists where at least I have been curiously looking towards his successes. And now it's over to. Dr. S Dr. Nadesh Sloka, and he's going to speak to you on buffalo cloning, multiplying the bl black gold. Nadesh, over to you. Uh, good morning. I am audible, sir. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Uh, very good morning to all. First of all, I am thankful to Professor Satish Kumar for invitation uh, to deliver the lecture in this series which they have initiated. and uh, really the introduction has about me has been given i'm not that kind of the person but i'm trying my best to do something to contribute something in the science uh so i will start the today the lecture will be basically on the buffalo if you look uh, so i will detail about the how the important of the species for indian context and uh, how can we improve the production potential of this important animal species in india uh now my slides is visible yes perfectly okay thank you thank you sir uh so as a start with the the topic with the buffalo cloning uh my sorry to intervene in bottom of your slide there is a it said start sharing and there is a hide so if you hide it then probably this line will disappear for your slides hide hide this yeah now you can come in slide mode uh, now is okay sir yeah that was fine okay uh, thank you very much uh, so buffalo cloning i think uh, regarding the cloning technology i think everybody is aware uh, 
about the i think from the textbook the classical textbooks the name fame sheep the dolly has been mentioned in every textbooks if you look at the molecular biology or reproductive biotechnology or now the genome editing everywhere if you go to the classical textbooks everybody is i think in students also uh, they have aware about the the dolly the sheep the clone is clone in edinburgh university in 5th july 1996 but that is a not the first clone people have been confused that this is a first clone produced in animals this is a first clone obviously first clone produced from the differentiated somatic cell so i will cover also historical part as i have been informed that there are many of the participants are student so i will cover the history of the animal cloning how it is initiated from sea urchins to the animal species including the primate now recently in 2018 the china has been cloned the primates with successfully by the somatic cell nuclear transfer so the everything will be i try to cover it so that the student also the knowledge about this technology as well as they can be updated themselves what is ongoing in field of the animal cloning research so if you look at the technicality of this animal cloning it is the making of biological copies of an any animal either it is a farm animal it is a laboratory animal or in case of the plants also clo plants cloning is very, very common Uh, as well as in bacteria also the cloning is but animal cloning we talk particularly of the animal cloning this refers to the the domestic animals largely as well as laboratory animals so making of biological copies identical biological copies by using the somatic cell nuclear transfer currently it is a somatic cell nuclear transfer earlier it was the embryonic nuclear transfer or embryo splitting that is also part of the animal cloning So look at the journey. How it is the animal cloning has been initiated in 1980s. By the first, there is the the principle has been demonstrated in the sea urchin. This is a theoretical principle 1985. After that, the process has been going on, going on, and then it is proved in the salamander. In particularly in the farm animals, if you look at the right hand uh, down side of the right hand side, there are three methods has been cloning methods has been uh, enumerated. The one first one is the somatic cell nuclear transfer. another one is the ent the embryonic nuclear transfer and third one is embryo splitting so embryonic nuclear transfer and embryo splitting it's already available in many uh, scientists as well as many countries they already produced before the birth of dolly but what is the peculiar feature of the dolly before the birth of dolly the scientific community believes that the differentiated somatic cell cannot revert back into the totipotent stage totipotent stage is the stage in the embryos which can able to generate the whole animal or whole organism including extra embryonic tissues like the placenta in case of the mammal so the dolly has been changed the mindset and make the paradigm shift in case of the reprogramming cellular reprogramming and uh, before that the dolly the basic method of the somatic cell nuclear transfer uh, i think everybody aware that john iron garden he awarded the nobel prize with the yamanaka and takahashi for the reprogramming approach so The first one experimentally proved in 1952, Robert Bridge and Thomas Cook, Thomas King, in the frogs, they demonstrated that cloning is possible, but particularly through the embryo splitting. So they split the embryos into two part, uh, frogs embryos, and they develop into. And before the Dolly birth, the two sheep already produced in University of Edinburgh. Again, the Megan and Morrow. These sheep are produced, but particularly these sheep are cloned from the nuclear donor in these sheep. the use is the embryonic cells the cells from the early embryos so as i told the, uh, before the birth of dolly people believes not believing that the differentiated somatic like the skin cells or other cells like the hair follicle cell blood cells anything is not able to differentiate back into the live animals so birth of the dolly has been changed so this way the technology has one advances and with the modification the technique initially Uh, the people have used the micro manipulator sophisticated equipment this equipment has been used to clone the animals but with the advance there again in the micro manipulator there are the different methods one is a zona free cloning is there one is the hand made cloning which we have been using in india uh, using it in india in 2004 uh, but before that the classical scnt which called as the embryonic nuclear transfer has been done when the uh, dr ml madan and dr singla and dr chavan they are initiated in 1993 96 but that time they could not able to produce the any animal the embryos all the embryos they produce they are stuck to the uh, morula stages and not even achieve the blastocyst stage so we will discuss in detail so it basically the somatic cell nuclear transfer uh, they divide into two major categories the micro manipulation based 
and micro manipulation free so micro manipulation is an instrument which you use to produce the embryos not only clone embryos but any kind of the now in case of human like human ivf every laboratory they produce the human ivf embryos through uh, in vitro fertilization but they use the icsi so for that uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection or if you want to generate the transgenic animal because dr sati has been lot of work on the transgenic animal and he has created uh, india's first transgenic facility at the ccmb uh, and there also there are a lot of transgenic animal and probably they use this micro manipulator this is the instrument to use to manipulate the zygote either sperms or the oocyte so this is a one approach to produce the clone embryos through micro manipulation based if you look at the uh, picture uh, below the micro manipulation there are the couple of the tools uh the used like the holding pipette injection pipette suction pipette so these are the tools they made in the laboratory or are now there's the commercial company has come up so commercial is also available and they perform the uh, all the somatic cell or embryonic cell or any kind of the manipulation the the person who handle this micro manipulation they require some kind of the expertise and the skills and uh, that's why the many uh, the laboratories could not able to generate the large number of the animals in terms of the laboratory uh, laboratory animals or the farm animal because of the expertization of that person who is handling the manipulation required some kind of sort of the training are essential to produce the animals to handle these uh, the embryos the another the technique uh, which i am going to talk about in much more detail it is a micro manipulation free method so micro manipulation free means obviously it's a represent the free means there is no use of micro manipulation i think standard cell culture laboratory which having the one pure thing to better one laminar flow rule and the stereo zoom microscope and uh, one electrofusion machine so this is a uh, only couple of instruments are required to generate the clone embryos as well as transgenic embryos so in this what is the advantage as i told the micro manipulation if you cost the micro manipulator currently cost in india between it's varies from 25 lakh to 30 lakh rupees so so my micro manipulation obviously is a no need of the micro manipulation so that there is a you obviously save the the cost of the equipment also the kind of the expertization required to produce the embryos through this uh, zona free method or called handmade cloning method is that not critical one that is the kind of expertization obviously required but not as that what required for the micro manipulation also it's a less expensive procedure is a very simple easy and easy to learn anybody can learn in couple of months like 6 months or 7 months and as well as when we compare the efficiency in terms of the live animal production there is no at all difference in between both this cloning uh, technique micro manipulation free as well as the micro manipulation based method so only uh, also another important advantages of this uh, micro manipulation free method is the because these embryos are the zona free actually when you look at the the oocyte the mammalian oocyte they have the highly protective uh, glycoprotein layer that's called the zona pellucida and that zona pellucida it is how the many advantages but another disadvantage if you look at the little bit disadvantages if the embryos don't have that energy level then zona pellucida could not be cracked by that embryos and embryos they have been inside the zona pellucida and for the transfer particularly to get embryos into implant into the uterus required to crack the zona and the embryo should be hatch that is for the hatch embryo and that hatch embryo will successfully only then if the embryos will hatch then only they will implant into the uterus but particularly for handmade cloning these embryos because they are zona free because uh, we do the manipulation in the stereo zoom microscope if you look at the pictorial presentation here also they show the bam, uh, enucleation uh, you the we do the uh, blade simple blade blade and because of the lack of zona these embryos already hatch when they form the blastocyst these embryos already hatch when these uh, embryos are already hatch they easy to implant so this is one of the advantages in addition to i will couple up about the challenges or the maybe the troubles what happen into the handmade cloning in detail in my subsequent slides so now we coming to the indian context when these uh, the buffalo cloning uh, in india at present we have been successfully demonstrated in only one farm animal species i must say in laboratory animal i was not much aware when they how any animals clone animals are produced but transgenic animal a lot of transgenic animal produce in uh, in india in laboratory animals but if you look at the farm animals in farm animals the, the buffalo is currently the only animal species we have successfully produced the clone animals around 20 30 clone animals which is surviving uh, some of the animals they have died also but at currently we have around the 20 25 animals 
in buffalo and they are surviving well uh, we are also studying the reproduction and production potential how these pullman animals behave in, uh, in terms of their performance so we are studying on these animals so this study in india it uh, started uh, in 1994 uh, as I told Dr. Madan uh, and Dr. Singla, Dr. Chauhan, Dr. Mani, Dr. Palta, these people, they have involved uh, to generate the micromanipulation based embryos. Uh, but that time, they could not able to produce the Amy blastocyst stage embryos. The embryos, they have arrested at the Morula of the late uh, early blastocyst stage. So blastocyst, because that time, uh, I, I, I think, uh, expertization, they have expertization, but the kind of literature and information available that time maybe the lacking because of the internet has been coming up in in early 2000s and onwards we have a lot of information lot of generation of the data is available so before the birth of dolly they have initiated this uh, the cloning technique uh, but they uh, their aim is to clone the buffaloes but unfortunately they could not able to produce through the micro manipulation based technique and then in 2004 onwards they again initiated the handmade cloning they actually the, uh, the principle of the Handmade cloning is demonstrated in cattle first uh, by Professor Vasta uh, from Hungary. He has been invented this method. Um, and then this method has been now currently adopted in four animal species. Buffalo is one of them, uh, cattle, pigs, and horses. So these in these four species, this technology is well established, and the, the more number of animals are produced through this technique. And in through this technique, it is proved that this technique is as good as with the Micro manipulation based SPNP. So, uh, here is a pictorial presentation of how the handmade clone embryos are produced. So, to clone then any animal, first we need to generate the somatic cells in laboratory. So, for establishment, we collect the tissue biopsies. The earlier days, we collect from the ear tissue biopsies. Now, we are shifted to the tail, tail uh, origin of tail tissue biopsies, which is the least exposed to sunlight. The why we selected this part to collect the, to establish the tissue. Uh, to establish the cells from this tissue biopsy because this part is the least exposed to uv sunlight uh, because these our animals particularly in indian uh, indian context our animal is uh, i think in daytime they exposed to the sunlight and it is a well known fact that if you any uh, the, the the skin part which is exposed to sunlight there the mutation rate is more also to generate the good quality of the cells from this exposed part is the less so so that's why we choose the uh, the tell derived part which is a just the origin of the tail so that part there is a divide of hair in animals also because in buffalo we have a lot of hair the black hair so so also the chances of success to get the cultures from the ear tissue plant has been less but we observe that whenever we culture the cells from the uh, tail part which is a lot exposed to and divide of hairs there is a hundred percent chance to establish the cells once it is established cells we procure the ovaries we isolate the eggs from the ovaries from sweater house and then mature these eggs in the laboratory and make them zona free if you look at the in the the downside there is a ovaries there oocytes are there and then making up them in zona free and then after that we manually enucleated these oocytes are the manually enucleated there are two methods of enucleation i think in my previous slides you maybe understand that is a enucleation one is the uh, uh, the handmade cloning that is a stereo zoom based so manually we enucleated those side and those enucleated part if you look at these enucleation the picture there is a two portion of the oocyte one is a smaller portion another is a large portion in the smaller portion the, again there is a bulging part that bulging part it is the a metaphase one the, uh, the oocytes are in metaphase two it's a polar body one so it's a it's a polar body before the uh, just below the polar body there is a metaphase second plate. So we remove the metaphase second plate and between the two oocyte, one somatic cell is fused with the electrofusion machine when they fuse. Hello? Hello? Ah, we are able to listen you. Okay, sir. Uh, then uh, the one oocyte, uh, two oocyte and one somatic cell are fused and these embryos then again chemically activated with the two chemicals, calcium ionophore and DMAP because we need to mimic the similar condition of the in vitro fertilization or in vivo fertilization and during the fertilization the calcium level is high so anyway we mimic that condition in laboratory once the embryos are at the in case of buffalo they culture in the laboratory for seven to eight days on the eight days these embryos generated embryos if you look at the blastocyst picture there are the two particular type of the cells one is the inner cell mass and another is the tofactor cells 
and these uh, the good quality of embryos are transferred into a surrogate mother that in surrogate mothers means in this case in uh, we synchronize them so we do not inseminate them so no mating has been happened so that the whatever the oocyte uh, the animals have come into the heat the estrus they will not mate it or artificially inseminate it so that their oocyte ovulative oocyte are not been fertilized on the seventh day on the same day but which day we generate the embryos in laboratory seventh or eighth day the same day on the same the, this foster mother or surrogate mother the embryos are transferred non surgically in case of the uh, sheep uh, in case of the um, uh, buffaloes and once these embryos transfer again after 30 or 35 days we check them with the ultrasonography to confirm these animals are pregnant or not those animal pregnant we take care of them till the calving because in buffalo it's a gestation period of approximately 10 month 10 days it's a thumb rule 10 month 10 days once the calf is born then again uh, we need to confirm these uh, are animals are genetically identical or the uh, identical copies or the genetic the same as the animal from where we took the donor cell so parentage verification has been done because why i am saying the need to be parentage verified we uh, because in uh, in case of the farm animals the large herd we have 300 400 herds there are simultaneously artificial insemination also been happening so by mistake there may be the chances the, of the artificial insemination may be done in these animals or sometimes for the hip detection in farm animals they use the teaser bull teaser bull bulls means they have all the reproductive vigor uh, but these animal these teaser bulls will not produce the uh, sperms in the, their seminal plasma but sometimes the case during the teasering procedure there may be the some of the viable sperm are coming out into the seminal plasma and they may cause the pregnancies in these animal so to avoid them and 100% sure is that so we do the uh, parentage verification of the every uh, born clones to confirm also now we have been doing the Uh, genetic testing because we are working on the bull cloning so we do the genetic testing so that these animals should be free from the genetic no chromosomal abnormality this kind of the couple of tests we do and then after that these when these animal mature well then they goes for the semen production or the in milk production so look at the buffalo why the buffalo is an important uh, animal in indian context i think many people uh, may i don't know uh, i think those are related to the agriculture everybody understand but those are not related to agriculture sometimes buffalo has been neglected uh, uh, that this is not that animal precious animal for the india but here i, I enumerated why it is an important animal if you look at the population of buffalo in india is half of than the cattle but its contribution in milk production is the double is the more than the cattle so so currently it's contribute around the 49 percentage in the population uh, in the milk production for the farmers buffalo is in really an ATP machine because we have uh, there is no legal regulation uh, no legal regulation in terms of the buffalo slaughter so if they are fertile infertile not productive or maybe the male is born or female is born the for the farmer it is an it is valuable because they can if there is a male or they infertile they can send it for the uh, the slaughter also if you look at the the milk consumption if because the buffalo has been produced a large amount of milk so i believe that around the 45% milk even if you buy the milk commercial companies they they make is the this milk is from the cow person milk but still there is a chances of the the mixing of the milk from the buffalo uh, in the milk so i i in my view approximately 40 to 45% of population indian population drinks the buffalo milk in particular if you look at the haryana and punjab i think 100% population they drinks the buffalo milk and they like it because of the much more nutrient content the fat percentage low cholesterol lot of the nutrient value of buffalo milk have if you look at the the indian uh, the earning from the foreign export the buffalo meat is the largest exporter and in last uh, couple of years the buffalo meat export value is around it more than 20000 crore rupees year per year the india has been exported buffalo meat particularly for the arabian countries vietnam uh, and via vietnam to china and some other part of the country and that cost is around the 20000 crore rupees more than 20000 crore rupees per year so it's uh, in uh, last uh, couple of years this export value earning has been surpassed as the basmati rice as now the coming days in coming days there is a lot of uh, the um, uh, emphasis has been given for the organic agriculture so because the for the organic agriculture the primary we require the dung so the dung of the buffaloes can be used to produce the organic manure vermicompost 
so the buffalo is a multi purpose so even if the in farms is as a farmer if he as, a, as if i'm thinking i'm a farmer in my house if the buffalo either he or she buffalo will you the male or female or she infertile or anything for the point of view for economically agriculture this animal is the really suitable and important for the indian context uh, as i already told how this contribution of the buffalo in the milk production if you look at the indian cows the productivity is less as compared to the buffalo no doubt the exotic animal we have the crossbred animal so we are not going to the detail how this crossbreeding as a thing but if you look at the particularly uh, here i'm mentioning the livestock census 2012 now the next livestock census has also been come up but this data just can glue the glimpse of how the contribution of buffalo the total milk contribution 53% now it has been decreased to the uh, 49% but anyway still there is a significant role in the milk production and uh, we have the uh, artificial insemination coverage so why uh, why i am just highlighting the artificial insemination coverage now currently in india at today's day we have around 30% artificial insemination coverage in this animal artificial insemination those are not related to the animal husbandry uh, i would like to inform that inform these people is that artificial insemination is a technique in which the semen from the bulls the breeding bulls or elite bulls they have trapezoid in the semen laboratory and from that laboratory it will distribute it into the each and each and every village of this country and there whenever the animal come into the estrus estrus means the showing the sign of heat at that time they call to the veterinary doctors or the associated people and they inseminate them with the semen they procure from the semen stations so three this way we are going to improve the genetic potential of the animal with this effort still we have the 20% coverage uh, now 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 at currently this is the data in 2012 but current population we have around the coverage of 30% and we wanted to increase the coverage of this artificial insemination because various added advantages of artificial insemination like this it control the disease spread many 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 things so elite animal one from if you if you look at the one bull can produce through artificial insemination can produce the 30 to 35 thousands uh, their progenies uh, if you consider the two insemination per uh, conception rate but for one bull maybe 1000 2000 if it they do for the natural mating so there is very other that is not a uh, much concern but what i would like to highlight here is that we wanted to improve increase the number of uh, artificial insemination each will is every animal should be inseminated artificially and with the semen of the elite animal that's why we initiated this uh, buffalo cloning in india particularly for bull cloning so i will go into detail how the bull cloning has been proceed but before that i will just highlight the journey of buffalo cloning in india as well as overall journey of the buffalo cloning in india as well as in world so india if you look at the uh, the, the the first claim in 2007 is produced the first uh, clone buffalo but that buffalo is a swam type it is a claim by the dr shi lebot in china so they produced these uh, 2007 they claimed to produce the swam buffalo in china that is the first live birth reported in uh, buffalo in any buffalo there are the two type of buffalo i think dr satish has well known or he has been expert he has been try to uh, unravel the how the buffalo has been domesticated and the distinction between swans and the uh, river and buffalo but anyway why i would like to highlight because india has been first country in the world they cloned the first river and buffalo and that is particularly of the murra murra breed this murra buffalo is a real and important this is an world famous breed of the buffalo which have the higher milk production potential as well as is is considered as the black beauty in among these buffaloes so that's why the my title of the talk is buffalo cloning multiplying black gold it's also considered as the black gold because it is a dark black jet color and high production potential much durability and extremely adaptable to the indian climatic condition so before that before this birth, live birth there are the attempts have been made to generate the clone embryos in uh, as i told 1997 the first attempts have been made in india itself to generate the embryos to the embryonic blastomere and then 1996 uh, from thailand 1990 uh, from thailand they uh, attempted the generate of the uh, embryos of the um, through the micro manipulation technique the with the uh, swam buffaloes so this is way in 2009 the first clone in india has been, uh, is produced and that is at the national dairy research institute karnal this is the first live reported birth in india and that is also the world first report to produce the clone riverine buffalo they need to be understand distinguish between the swamp and riverine buffalo uh, 
this is the world first clone river and buffalo after that the many 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 clones have been produced because that time still the 2000 up till the 2010 or 14 the the main emphasis of this techniques to optimize the technique and try to identify which basic uh, requirements are required to produce the higher to produce the large number of the clones and how to optimize the technique so that we can improve the success rate so if you look at in the the arrow which is uh, the, the directional arrow if you upper side of the arrow there is a different type of cells are required uh, cells are mentioned like the fetal fibroblast newborn fibroblast adult fibroblast embryonic stem cell semen derived urine derived so many several types of so whatever the cells we can able to use as a cloning these all the kind of the cells are used uh, to see their potential to in in terms of the live animals so this way the cloning has been well established and now in 2000 until the 2013 14 and in 2000 after that now our aim is to produce the large number of animals because now we have well established technique so we can target the any animal which we would like to clone so now the currently the indian council of research both our institute as well as the ndri that are, we are targeting to produce the elite the cloning of the elite breeding bulls because they, as i think from my slide this can be much more uh, the clear to everybody is that the bulls have the very very important and critical role in the genetic improvement in farm animals so regarding the handmade cloning journey so it's a technique is a dis different than the micro manipulation is concept in 1998 there is Pura as well as the Geber Vasta they have established and now it is succeeded in these uh, uh, sorry I, earlier I have mentioned the four uh, now it has been the six species here with the cattle, pig, buffalo, goat, sheep and horses also have been included in this list so actually the six species have been cloned through this method this is what we need to clone a buffalo this is very simple and technique as I told it requires a stereo zoom microscope uh, pipette for the handling of the oocyte. If you look at here, uh, in this pipette oocyte, there is one manual cutting blade and an electrofusion machine, the BTX electrofusion machine. This is the, the couple of instruments are required and then you can e try to produce the, the clone animal. And then this is the last one. This is the first uh, the clone uh, produced that in India, it's named the Samrupa. So as I told, the condition has been optimized, the different condition parameters has been optimized. These are the studies from India, uh, different researchers, uh, they optimize the technique, the electrofusion parameters, uh, activation culture, what activation are required, what kind of the compounds are required, and how much time are required, in vitro culture, which medium, which surface. So everything has been done until 2013, uh, up to 13-14. And then these are the couple of animals that are produced from the different cell source, embryonic stem cell, adult, in adults also urine, skin, wild buffalo also we attempted to clone at NDRI and then subsequently these when everything has been uh, optimized uh, here if you look at the, the success rate in different culture media the different media we use the RBCL, MSOP and MCR2 these are the three different culture media have been compared to generate uh, the clone embryos and their efficiency in this uh, the first the, the picture it shows that the RBCL is more now we are using the RBCL as a medium to culture the embryos also the in terms of the surface what kind of the surface is required flat surface micro drop well of oil uh, the micro drop it again the two one is a 20 microliter five microliter and among these it shows that either you can use the flat surface or micro drop culture which is a 20 microliter and that use uh, the embryo production rate currently we have around the 30 to 35 percent average percentage i'm not saying that some people maybe have the 50 percent also it's possible but if you look at in worst to worst condition and every time you will get around the 30 to 35 percent is of blastocysts from the fused embryos. Again, there are the couple of cytoplasm has been used: the triplet cytoplasm, doublet cytoplasm, single cytoplasm. The so it is a, it is uh, our previous study shows that the single cytoplasm does not support the embryonic development as uh, uh, comparable to the double cytoplasm or triple cytoplasm. So, if you compare the double and triple cytoplasm, means the three oocyte, recipient and one somatic cell. Double means two oocyte and one somatic cell. So, in that the double cytoplasm and triple cytoplasm, there is no much significant difference. But at this advantage of triple cytoplasm is that you need the large number of, again, the large number of oocyte and there is the chances of mitochondrial cytoplasm being more in, again, when you increase the number of cytoplasm. So now we stick to the this part. Also, one study has been uh, conducted to use the BCB positive oocyte and BCB negative oocyte. So BCB positive oocyte is uh, considered to be the competent oocyte and BCB negative. But what we currently are using, we currently use the RBCL as a medium for culturing of embryos, flat surface uh, to culture again the embryos, 
and the double cytoplasm. We are not using the PCB1 and PCB2 uh, to distinguish the oocyte, but it's obviously when you use the PCB1 uh, positive oocyte, and then obviously the, the development rate is higher. Uh, this is a global status of the how the buffalo cloning is worldwide. So uh, this is a little bit over uh, the it, it is paper has been published in 2018, but the data here compiled until 2015. So but nowadays there is more more success rate and more number of animals are produced. And now the handmade cloning in buffalo also it has been initiated in Italy and in in a, in, a, in South in Brazil also they have initiated the handmade cloning in Italy and Brazil and also China. The first handmade cloning buffalo is initiated in India, but now currently the three countries they use this uh, uh, handmade cloning in uh, China, Italy, and Brazil. So uh, here, if you look at the uh, previous in, in this before 2000, uh, maybe I must say consider 2015 or 16, uh, the India is only actually use the handmade cloning. Other countries in buffalo they use the traditional cloning, which is the micromanipulation based. But now day by day they are also shifting to the and because it's much more reduced, simple and easy. And we have shown that it is possible to produce the large number of clone animals through this technique. So look at the, in terms of the, whatever the data available on the, and the, the resources like PubMed or anywhere in the literature. So compare the uh, blastosis percentage. If you look at the left one, upper left figure, the handmade cloning have the 30 to 40% blastosis rate and the classical SCNT, which is the micromanipulation based. Uh, it's uh, this data from the China, uh, Italy, majorly from the China, and then Italy and some from the Thailand. They achieve the blood pressure around 10 to 20 percent. If you look at the live birth efficiency, uh, before that, according to publish the data, the cattle have around 11 percent, pigs have 13, goat 6 percent, 5 or 6 percent on goat and sheep and horses. They are higher, but because of the horses, they are much, they're not that much data what the available other species. And uh, very few people are using in the horses, so they have the much more. But if you look at the Indian data, uh, earlier it was a 2.5%, uh, whatever the, the life success rate or efficiency in term. But in today's, uh, because of we because of this project we initiated in 2018 onwards, uh, or 17, you must say 17, from 17, now we have the success rate around the 8 to 10%. So 8 to 10%, what, what if you transfer 100 embryos, 100 sperm, we hope successfully to have the live healthy animals uh, up to 8 or 10. So these are the reports available. Uh, this is and, and downside is the riverine buffalo, particularly Murra and the swamp. Now the current focus of buffalo cloning research uh, in India, uh, as I told you, is attempt to produce the multiple copies of the light bulls. And the second important, we wanted to again simplify this technology with the more uh, efficiency and more success rate. Also, because our major concern till today, we have the higher abortion rate, around the 20 to 25 percentage of abortion rate. Means when we have established the 10th pregnancy, in this 10th pregnancy, two or three pregnancies will be aborted in early gestation, means before the three months. Some may be abort in mid gestation and some may be abort the late. In addition to that, when suppose the 10 clone cup is born, there is a chances of the one or two clone cup may be died before they are attaining to the maturity. And we, this study shows that in uh, in cattle, pigs, and we also studied uh, in buffalo also, this early abortion and these, uh, whenever the animals are dying, because of the abnormal epigenetic or nuclear reprogramming of the differential somatic cell. So we are also studying the understanding how this reprogramming process happen, this affect our success rate. So these are three major aspects uh, we are studying currently in, in our laboratory, both at NDR and CIRB, to uh, understand the improve the success rate as well as to understand the genomic reprogramming these clone embryos. In addition to that, we also initiated the somatic cell banking. Uh, somatic cell banking because important, we need to have the somatic cells of any like animal. So our somatic cell banking at CIRB, particularly our institute only, we initiated in 2013 uh, 14 2014 we initiated to just uh, try to generate the somatic cell banks so from the light animal so that whenever the, anybody need the somatic cell they need to be held in one place so anybody need even if you, we need the somatic cell after 10 years so we can use this somatic cell and these animals what we are doing currently preserving somatic cell these animals are light from the the government organized herds as well as these animals are breeding bulls. So we have the, all these data, the pedigree data, the production performance data, the breed characteristic data. And now currently we have the two breeds, uh, somatic cell, particularly 
for the milch in terms of the milch animals one is a murra another is the uh, nil ravi buffalo and uh, with this also we have attempted to optimize the transgenic buffalo in reproduction uh, in buffalo both at uh, uh, india also there are one or two publications from our laboratory also we publish that it is possible to produce the transgenic embryos using the reporter expressions or i will uh, maybe in my subsequent slide there is one slide on the transgenic embryo production uh, the third and important uh, the aspect which we are studying is the performance assessment because the uh, what we need to deliver to the country these animals should be used for the breeding our aim is to those animal they have performed well they have no any abnormality in terms of their genomics so we compare every aspect from the gene to their performance from the gene level we are going to conduct studies at their genomics level they have mitochondrial heteroplasmy their performance like the semen quality how their semen quality behave and once they are the, if this they produce the semen and the successfully to episode what is the fertility rate of these clone bulls and the fertility also been checked and once the fertility check their progeny is also until until the one generation still today we have the data until the one generation the progeny produced from these clone bulls they are progeny absolutely no health effect so they, these progeny are well their hematology profile we compare their serum biochemistry we had compared and absolutely there is no difference in terms of their growth also uh, in terms of uh, success rate in terms of the conception rate gestation length everything is normal as that of the non clone animals so this is our current focus currently in india uh, in terms of the buffalo cloning uh, what we are going to do so i will not go into detail i think uh, from my presentation everybody have the glimpse what we are trying we identify the high genetic merit bulls from the population and try to multiply them to make the copies uh, at least five copies from each bull and when they bull reach to the semen production we type preserve them and then use for the artificial nation because from one bull if you produce of 30000 progenies so from the five bulls we can produce 1.5 lakh progenies from the five bull if you are copies at that superior animal so it will be improve the gen it can help to improve the genetic potential of our buffalo population if i look at the uh, particularly for haryana punjab I, i i think in my opinion also i think our team opinion also if you look at our team or those have been uh, policy maker they believe that uh, also we also believe that there is no need to use this kind of the bulls which is produced in haryana and used in haryana there is a need to use this bull in other state like if you look at the artificial coverage information in madhya pradesh is around the 10% not more than that also there is a population of or maharashtra also there is not much artificial sense coverage like the 20% but the population of non descript animal is much much higher also the low production animal suppose the buffalo in haryana they use around 20 liter so 15 liter consider 15 liter the average milk production of the buffalo but the same breed of buffalo they could not able to produce that amount of milk of 15 liter of milk in maharashtra or in madhya pradesh or odisha bihar or andhra pradesh obviously no doubt there is a management and practice is also important but in addition to that we need to include the genetic pool of elite animal in this the pockets of the country and if we include this the, the animal to improve the genetic makeup i think and this way i think every state will have that kind of the animals which have the higher uh, potential uh, our aim this is our uh, overall aim to clone the bulls upper one is the classical breeding approach uh, how this breeding has been ongoing in the farm animals so declare proven bulls and then they use for the artificial insemination and they produce the next generation calf suppose we have the declare proven bull and if we have the four clone copies uh, then how many animals can be used from the next generation calf the clones are not been used uh, to produce the large number of clone itself but the clone bulls will be used their semen as a consider as a seed will be used to produce the next generation of breed to the classical breeding again here also classical breeding by the artificial insemination then but still we can produce the the large number of progeny from the one to uh, one bull to one bull by cloning method by making them as the multiple copies uh, this is what we have achieved in the last year uh, these are the clones we have produced at the cirb uh, from one animal m29 this is a bull a breeding bull uh, and these animal performance in terms of their semen quality in terms of the daughter performance as uh, going well that's why we selected this bull and try to make the multiple copies this assignment has been assigned to us by indian council of agriculture in 2018 uh, to initiate the large scale production of the multiple clones 
uh, from the one animal. So keeping in this on this target, we try to clone this M29 bull, and from the one bull we produce the seven copies. So actually, we have around the eleven pregnancies. But as I told, these pregnancies, some of the pregnancies have been aborted in early gestation. Some may be delayed, and now we have presently we have the seven copies from the one animal that is the M29. And we hope when these animals are mature well, they will have the donate the semen, and the donate the semen will be used. Each clone will be used in the each state in the or one or two two clones in one state. Obviously, these animal our target is to these animals sent to the different parts of the country uh, for the genetic improvement program. Uh, also, in addition to that, if you the rightmost one, the last one clone is the reclone calf. And this reclone calf in 2015 we cloned the one bull that Hisar Gaurav, his name as Hisar Gaurav, and that from that clone again we wanted to scientifically to show that yes, can clone be clonable? That is also a question mark. So this we use that cells from this Hisar Gaurav bull and then clone it, and then it shows that yes, the clone also be clonable. And now we have the. Uh, clone reclone calf of the Hisar Goro. In addition to the CIRB, NDLI also have a couple of clones. They have also two clones, healthy clones from the one more another bull, 4354. That is also an, uh, uh, the bull under the progeny testing program. Uh, and these bulls, whatever the bulls, at currently we have at CIRB, we have 10 clone bulls. In addition to eight here, two clone bulls we have. The one is a Hisar Goro and one is the Sach Goro, which is an Assamese clone bull. So in the Assamese clone bull, so I will put in my uh, subsequent slides out. But I would like to highlight here this number of clones we have demonstrated for the first time, so that from the one animal, seven clones can be produced. Also, but particularly for buffalo, no doubt there are reports in cattle, but particularly for buffalo, we demonstrated that yes, it is possible to produce the multiple clones from the one animal. Also, a clone buffalo can be recloned. So this is uh, the reclone is a more scientifically uh, is more scientifically the work but it's a most more the important thing is that yes multiple copies can be grown from the one bull one animal so here also the one of the publication another important publication uh, from the this is from the ndri so in that in this study we think can it possible to clone the dead bulls the dead bulls mean progenitor these bulls are progenitor but the semen is available in the uh, semen bank if the semen can we isolate the viable somatic cell from the triatus of semen and once it is isolated can these cells be uh, have ability to produce the clone embryos if they produce the clone embryos can these clone embryos able to produce the live healthy animal yes so through this study we demonstrated that yes it is possible to culture the somatic cells from the triatus of semen i think this is a first report in any species including cattle pig or the uh, a, any species, you know, in laboratory animal to culture the somatic cells from the cryopizo semen and successfully use this cryopizo semen derived somatic cells as a donor to produce a clone embryos and the live healthy. These are the clone is available at NDRI. Uh, this is a clone of the progeny tested bull 4393 uh, that name as Rajat and this now the bull has then come into the semen production. So now this bull is producing the semen at the NDRI. Uh, this is another important publication from the CIRB. Uh, as I told, we have cloned the bull Hisar in 2015. So we comprehensively study this this one animal. This is the data from the one animal from their cell physiology, how their uh, blood hematology, serum biochemistry, in terms of the in vitro, uh, the, the donor animal cells, how they behave in terms of their embryo development, epigenetic changes in the cells and the embryos in laboratory. We studied gene expression also, we studied like a couple of gene expression that are related to the uh, epigenetics or the pluripotency gene or cell cycle gene. This study again, we studied how the conception rate has been uh, uh, compared to the pregnancy rates of the clone animal. Also, when this clone has been born, we studied the blood hematology, serum biochemistry, health every month weight gain until they attain the semen production. Once it's coming to semen production, these animal again, uh, the track is the semen. Parameters have been studied. What was their semen? What is the sperm concentration? How the semen uh, like fertility, in vitro fertility by uh, in vitro fertilization, as well as the CASA indices. So in this animal, we cover the every aspect which is required to recommend any animal for the breeding. Also, this clone bull has been used as a uh, semen producer or used for artificial insemination. And currently, from this animal, we have 
around the 30 animals live animals from this animal we produce and in the future we will uh, include these animal for the studies like the performance also how they behave how their physiology growth in terms of uh, every aspect of this animal as what we are doing uh, what the, from the couple of decades uh, the indian council of agriculture or animal veterinary department are going uh, they are doing for the classical breeding like the pro, like the in progeny testing program so in this clone also we are the on going on the path to generate the data in the large number but the constraint for us is that because we are the research institute and the research institute have a several sets of mandate and many things so we demonstrate it we prove this it but now it is a time to adopt this technology and uh, use this technology at the field level we have been in touch with the department of biotechnology our uh, the laboratory the manager or the head or the leader of printing other he has been in touch with the uh, uh, department of biotechnology indian council of agriculture research to take up this technology now our aim is to because we have this clones you consider at present we have the 15 clones these clones will not be as a statue in any institute it should be used in the field uh, it should be evaluated in the field are they really performing well what will be going to happen what was our breeding policy to implement these clones so we have been in, in that process and we hope uh, that uh, government of india particular department of uh, animal husbandry and fishery and did for aggregate search and recommend this bull uh, for the breeding in obviously in the considering the all the aspect of the the classical breeding so here we our highlighted is that we, we show that the growth health and fertility of a clone bull is similar to the non clone bulls uh, these are the progenies of the hisar gaurav as i told this is a clone bull which is covered in the last publication uh, this is a progenies from the hisar gaurav one also progenies we are giving the semen to the farmer with the consent uh, not that at the large scale but is a small number uh, to just demonstrate it that yes it is possible to produce the use the clone bull semen at the farmer level to have the animal at their farm and these animals if you look at here the downfed animal is really beautiful the murra uh, animal the born and the, at the farmer's uh, house and these animals growing well in terms of their growth and hope when these animal come into the milk we will also record the milk uh, performance uh, this is a recent uh, paper we published uh, in 2020 but this data has been generated from the last uh, from 2014 onwards uh, or 15 onwards so in this paper uh, again the important thing because earlier paper was our publication is only for the one bull uh, that is bull we produce at the cirb but in this study we thought well, because our uh, whenever we uh, present this paper or pay data to the uh, scientific audience or the policy makers they are this is the data from one animal only you need to have the data from more number of animals included so keeping this mind we initiated that studies and uh, we shows that in this study we use the three clone bulls so two from the ndri uh, that is a clone shrestha swarna and one is from our crb crb again itself so these three clone will be compare again the, all the aspect which we covered in earlier publication and we shows that yes is all the three clone, bull, clone bulls their fertility their semen parameter and their pregnancy rate after the artificial insemination is absolutely normal and progenies produced from these clones are normal and now we have been trying our attempts to translate this technology from our laboratory to the land so that to land approach we have been considering and we hope this technology will be accepted uh, this is again the one clone we have uh, the studies are ongoing but this clone is born in 2017 uh, at our cirb uh, by afford of the cirb not at cirb actually this is a clone born at the field field means it is organized dairy from sirsa it is around the 100 kilometers away from the hisar there is one organized dairy farm is there so we thought can it possible for us to produce the clone animal at the farmer's house or farmer's field so keeping in this mind also from the distance animal can it possible the south indian animal can be cloned at the north india or north indian animal clone at the south india or assam animal can be cloned in hisar or hisar animal if the cloning laboratory is established at the assam can it possible to clone these animals to a different part of the country so the keeping in this mind we initiated and uh, this animal is clone this animal is the assamese uh, buffalo this assamese buffalo has a much more important agriculture important in assam state or northeastern state of india so from there we picked uh, tissue from the three animals we brought the tissue at our laboratory 
we culture them and after the culture we use the recipient oocyte from this red cross so probably we believe that in north india like the delhi or here the majority of animal uh, coming into this letter they are a murra type or murla type similar type of animals because the swamp animal of swamp type of animal is not available here so these animals when they brought so we electrofuse with these oocyte of the river and type or murra type of animals and then produce the clone embryos in laboratory and these clone embryos are transferred around the day of transfer is transferred from our hisar laboratory to the sirsa it takes around the 2 hours so we transport by the car and then transfer into the organized form the recipient again there is a murra i will look at the right hand side there is a picture of these uh, a brown color uh, calf uh, light brown color calf and the dark black jet a buffalo that is a murra uh, type of buffalo so murra buffalo has been again used as a surrogate mother here so this is also a challenge for us can it possible the other breed of animal be uh, work as a surrogate for the any any other breeds of the animal so this studies overall if you look at here these are the studies couple of the targets have been proved to this studies one the distance animal can be cloned like the north indian animal can be cloned or tissues can be transported any part is very simple and straight forward process also clone embryos can be produced from the, there is no breed effect like if you use the nili ravi oocyte or jafrabadi oocyte or murra oocyte or any any other species oocyte that will not affect their embryo production rate also the recipient animal can be used in from any breed but is keeping in that like uh, the structure because these animals smaller in size uh, in asa so this may be possible to use a surrogate mother but if the murra animal will be transfer into the uh, assamese animal i am not sure how they this pregnancy will going on but it is it is quite possible yes it is quite possible to use also in this uh, current project we try to clone the nili ravi buffalo and the nili ravi buffalo it is it has the typical morphology punch punch some kind of punch five markings on the body so that criteria that is a one of the important breed in punjab buffalo breed uh, so we produce the clone embryos of the nili ravi and then transfer these nili ravi embryos into the murra we have successes we could establish the pregnancy but unfortunately uh, these all these pregnancies most of them like the four pregnancies as terminate at the various stages of gestation one calf has been born uh, that calf uh, has been died at the month of the two months of age and we are been now uh, working on this why these all these pregnancies we have the samples about the samples and the dead animal samples and we hope we will target these animals why these animals are aborted that might be the species or breed difference or might be reprogramming difference anything can be possible because it's the science so we we need to prove uh, that why these animals are aborted and uh, how we can be a wide is abortion and could able to produce the live healthy animals amongst the the transfer of the embryos from one breed to other breed so this is the uh, the cover when we this news has been sent to current science they have covered it into the cover page also this news has been covered by the rajesh patil uh, as i told we are also working on the frozen depository this is a little bit old data uh, here but currently we have the elite animal cells we have around 20 elite buffalo cells and total we are 40 total animals we are 40 but elite elite means what elite means these animals are pedigree they are well established pedigree record production record and these animals are under the breeding plan so currently we have the somatic cells from the 20 elite buffalo and total we have the 40 uh, animal cells which include the three three from the assamese uh, seven six seven from the nili ravi and majority from the murra type from each animal we try to preserve at least uh, 25 and now we are been increasing number to some animals we have 80 or some maybe 70 so 45 now we have been try preserving the cells from the elite animal 45 uh, in in these animals also we have some of the champions uh, animals also um, as as a conservation of these animals or preserving the cells from the animals some of the animals uh, if you look at these uh, arya and punjab they have the championships of programs uh, ongoing to promote the animal husband practices particularly buffalo husband practices so that more and more people should adopt the animal or more and more uh, people are engaged in these uh, buffalo husband practices so the championship has been uh, happening from the last many years in these reasons so from these champions means like uh, those are bulls are declared to be a champion number 1 number 2 or something like that they have set criteria 
as well as female which has producing the higher milk yield uh, still today uh, if you look at the championship record uh, in haryana itself the one buffalo is produced 35 liters uh, milk a day this is the highest record yet today uh, but hope the this is one animal only but in average if you look at these elite category animals they have around the 20 to 25 liters a milk of uh, milk of per day so these uh, animals self we are practicer uh, in this biobank and this our aim is to you provide this biobank cells for the any researcher in india or abroad if they would like to work on the any kind of the assays in using the buffalo cells or the breeders uh, they would like to use because nowadays the genomic uh, selection based uh, technique is coming up in couple of years we hope that india also be need uh, use this genomic based selection in farm animals and in coming days it will be come up so so if they want to do screening these animals because sometimes these animal will not be available but if cell is available because somatic cells have the diploid genome and the diploid genome semen can be used but semen or uh, the oocyte oocyte and semen have the haploid genome so these uh, kind of cells cannot be exactly used for the genomic based selection or the screening approaches so keeping in this mind these somatic cells repository of the somatic cells will be extremely extremely useful uh, for the genomic based selection in future for, at least for the experiment purpose also like any proteomics approach genomic studies like characterization they need the somatic cell or dna from the isolate you need not to have the animal but you have the trial of the cells and that from that trial the all the complete study uh, can be done uh, in addition to that we are uh, also demonstrated that can be possible to produce the clone embryos using the reporter expression so we are also working on these animals uh, in these approaches to and a hope in a coming of years we have initiated the produce the transgenic as well as genome edited buffaloes uh, in india so we have the two projects uh, currently uh, one is already approved and one is under uh, under process these animals uh, one is the department of biotechnology uh, project which uh, help us to are demonstrated as a proof of principle to produce the knockout uh, buffalo consisting having the higher meat uh, potential so this already project and next is also we have in pipeline hopefully it will be go through it in this uh, we target the three species sheep goat and buffalo uh, to produce the meat yield of these animal obviously in simultaneously on this line so what in this slides i would like to uh, highlight is that we generate the uh, transgenic cell line which containing the reporter expression in the buffalo's uh, fibroblast cells and these transgenic cell line are used as a donor and to produce the clone embryos so if you look at these embryos picture if you shown here the from right hand side one is the bright field and one is the fluorescence field so fluorescence field because of the reporter expression they express the uh, embryos if you look at here the embryo picture here if you look at the textbook pictures of the embryos they are different because these embryos are zoonotic and clone embryos so that's why this the, the pictures you are shown uh, here the embryos picture they looks different than the classical textbooks so this we have the protocol to generate the transgenic cell line to generate the transgenic embryos and through this protocol optimus protocol we exploit explore this protocol to produce the edited animals in the future we have been using the crispr as a tool because crispr i think in the last lecture i i also heard the expert Uh, the CRISPR has been uh, has been evolving so fast and been adopting in every laboratory. I think every laboratory, many laboratories, have been using according to their purposes. So here, what we are trying, uh, we are trying to exploit the CRISPR tool to edit the uh, particularly for production potential traits as well as the disease resistant uh, traits. And we hope that if everything goes well in couple of years after uh, today, maybe twenty twenty three, twenty five. Uh, before the 25 we will have the uh, uh, edited buffalo at least edited buffalo or the other farm animal so in addition to our similar line the one the department of biotechnology is to the national institute of animal biotechnology they are working on the same similar line and we hope uh, uh, they work or we work we work for the country and uh, in india at least we will flourish this the application of biotechnological tool uh, to improve the uh, potential of indian animal Uh, in the farm animal particularly because we are the animal husbandry or veterinarian as a veterinary scientist so our aim is to uh, deliver something to the country in terms of the higher production of animal or the, the animals to this nation uh, in addition to that i would like to just highlight some of the concerns many people have the many questions and they confuse these are the clone animals with the transgenic or anything 
So I would like to mention that clones are not genetically engineered as animals. They are different. Those I know, they understand. But many times, the, these, these are the common questions people are asked us. Uh, second one, the offspring of the clones are not a clone. Suppose the clone female is there. When the clone female delivers the calf, or they will inseminate either through the natural mating or the artificial insemination, when the animal of the born, the offspring of the clones are not a clone. It is confused. Also, the many people are asked the aging is aging an issue in the clone animal because why this is highlighted? Because there is the Darwin and Bosch in the fourth uh, July 1996. After five years. Uh, six years, the dolly has died because of what I mean, it can happen to any animal. So, uh, any, any, any disturbance from Continue. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, when the dolly has been born, it's, uh, the, the concern is that the dolly has been dying and early. Uh, so, the people have been raised, the negative. Uh, news has been spread in the scientific community or public uh, is that the clones have the shorter age. The same group in 2017 published the paper in research publication. In 2017, the same donor animal cells, the dolly cells, have been used and they cloned the four ships. Again, the four ships uh, the, from the donor cell which was, which was used to clone the dolly. And from the same animals in the four clones, they compare everything from arthritis, aging, 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 and these animals, the in this paper they proved that the clones are the normal aging. In 2008, FDA, this is a regulatory agency in the USA, they declared that the, the clones and their offspring product, particularly milk and meat, are safe for human consumption, and there is a no need of labeling. Or any products from the clone animals. So, so everything has also been recommended and uh, used for the, the these clone animal products for the consumption. Also, the many countries, except the European Union, uh, except the European Union, the many countries have the cloning, uh, the commercial cloning facilities. Uh, USA have the couple of companies. China is coming up with a lot of cloning companies uh, in the last uh, decade. Uh, Australia also have New Zealand, uh, Brazil also coming up with the lot of the uh, Brazil has been doing excellently well in assisted reproductive technology, including cloning. They are coming from many countries. Uh, the Brazil have been using the cloning technology. So the, my intention to show this slide is that uh, some of the doubts could be cleared for the public people, other people, so that how these clone animals uh, they are not an abnormal animal. They if they mature well, grow well. They have the normal aging, their offspring are not clone, and these are the not a genetically engineered animal. So, to have the animal to produce, we need not to have any approval from the in India, the RCJ is there, which is dealing with the transgenic animal or genetic engineering animal, plant, this one or GDSE. So, but for the clone animal, we did not have any, any regulatory agency need to be take a pure approval to produce the animals or use these animals because they are not a clone, uh, not a transgenic one. Uh, what the challenge is for us, uh, uh, the, uh, everything is not uh, like the smooth as we have, as I told, there is a challenges, obviously challenges there, there are constraints are there, the first and most important challenge for us to improve the live birth rate, as I told, we have around 30% uh, abortion rate, how we can minimize this 30% abortion rate to 5 or 10%, so this is a challenge for us, we are working uh, on this on this line. Uh, and I hope in coming year, if we not improve at least uh, uh, live birth rate to have a white abortion rate thirty percent, so at least maybe we will have the twenty percent. So for that, we are using the different uh, the molecules or the culture conditions or efficient management practices. Also, we showed that efficient management practice also an important to uh, have the higher success rate. And the second challenge is for us to generate the more data. As I told, we as a research institute. As a scientist, we can demonstrate something, but to have the technology to be in the field, there are more people need to be involved. If the more people will be involved, more data will be generated. They, the data either positive side or negative side, that is a different issue. But uh, our interest is to have the data, at least have the more data on the clones, how they are performing, how their fertility, and how these animals will be can be used for the breeding. And they need to be, have the policy at the, at the government level how big these animals can be used uh, for the breeding.
uh, now we have been ongoing to use the clone bull semen uh, should be reached at the uh, farmer level. So we have been analyzing these animal semen at our laboratory and we are ready to give the, if anybody requested us, uh, we need uh, the clone animals from your side. We have the clones already, uh, 10 clones. And I think every, those are been involved in the animal husbandry, the activities in the country, they are aware of it. We have the clones. Uh, if anybody requested that they wanted to evaluate or they wanted to work or they wanted to utilize this semen from this animal or even the animals, uh, uh, we can provide them and they can test them and then recommend us and suggest us ki, uh, how these animals are behaving. Or they, if anybody wanted to use the semen from the clone animals, we can provide currently we have the semen from the, uh, if, uh, if I consider as the elite animals, so we have the one, two, three uh, clone bull semen which has been uh, under the breeding plan uh, and one is from the Assami. So four animal semen we have and in coming years, maybe next year or after that in a couple of two years, we will have the semen from the 15 uh, clone animals. Also, uh, how we can improve now the next challenge for us uh, as a scientist, we can how this cloning technology which we have been optimized in India from last to from 2006 to here almost uh, 15 years or 16 years. Uh, efforts so how this technology can be used in editing technology uh, so editing has been coming up genome editing particularly CRISPR technology coming up can we exploit this cloning technology as an efficient tool what we have used for the produce of clone animal and to deliver the edited animals in India particularly for the improved production trade and health uh, health aspect the disease resistant uh, this is uh, the last slide from my conclusion uh, conclusion slide as I told, there is a valuable breeding tool uh, that can be used to complement the artificial insemination to improve the India's buffalo chumplasm. I use the word the complement because we are not recommending this technology to replace the artificial insemination. Obviously, artificial insemination will not be going to replace. Uh, it is a backbone. It is the only technology in terms of the production uh, aspect of the farm animal. This technology is only technology that is reaching to the farmer. Apart from the vaccination, this is only technology which has been implemented in the farm level and the people or farmers are accepting that. So what we are suggesting or what our aim is. Uh, this is the last slide and I am really grateful to these uh, all the people. This is uh, not data by my own itself. Uh, this is a lot of people, lot of students, a uh, lot of scientists have been involved to generate the data on the clone animals. So it is a started journey from the NDRI and now it is in CIRB. Uh, from India, I am really grateful to uh, or maybe thankful to the two people, Dr. Singla and Dr. Chavan, who have been motivated and always supported whatever we are uh, doing. Uh, they are always supported they, and they always encourage, uh, continue your efforts. It may be people uh, criticize or maybe people discourage this kind of work should not be done. There are different, different issues. But these two people, uh, also Dr. Palta, uh, also been uh, so always encouraged because that time, uh, I, I know the Satish sir when I was student MSc and PSD, he usually visit uh, at NDRI for their advisory committee or something and he always visited our laboratory and always motiv motivated us to continue the good science and from maybe uh, today fi after 15 years we have the clone animals. So this is a long journey has been achieved by this technology from at least in terms of the uh, product uh, in terms of the product. Now we have the clone animal and these animals should be used. Uh, for the breeding. This is the, the journey from the NDRI and CRB when uh, we initiated in CRB in 2010 or onwards, um, 13 I have joined the CIRB as a scientist, my first posting here. Uh, then uh, Dr. Yadav was already uh, interested or initiated the cloning technology at the CIRB and Dr. Sharma, Dr. Dharmendra and Dr. Monika with these efforts of all and a couple of more people are there, students also there, project staff also there and the efforts of all is uh, this now we have the technology so i really acknowledge these the people their contribution uh, either in the bench either in the policy or in terms of the any kind of support uh, to keep up moral uh, our, of our team to high to have uh, to continue the activities of research in addition to that because to run the any project we need to have the funding agency so the grateful to the indian council of agriculture research who have recently supported from the last 15 years, they have continuously supported this technology, uh, continue to work on this technology. The NDRI also is their, uh, is their my institute, 
the directors of our institute they have supported and they continue and the department of biotechnology and department of dst uh, they have couple of supported couple of projects on this aspect so uh, thank you these all these people as well as funding agencies thank you thank you all if you have any question i can take thank you for your patience and and giving this opportunity to share my experiences so uh, thank you dr naresh it's it was a very exciting work and it was a really interesting lecture so now i request dr inderjit kaur to direct the questions to the speaker hello hello am i audible yes 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 please yeah uh, good afternoon dr siloka this is dr inderjit from biotechnology department uh, thank you for a very informative and wonderful seminar today uh, we have learned a lot Thank so you. if you if you if you uh, permit i will ask the questions from the audience yeah yeah yeah, yeah please please uh, before that can i show the one video three minute video i would like to uh, show to the audience of course please play. yes okay uh, how to share Uh, my slides are shared or it's under process hello hello uh, can my slides or screen has been shared or still i am uh, no, no 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 i no. think no no we can't no. see your slides okay okay just wait uh, it's showing connecting so it will maybe take uh, yeah maybe network connection so it may take few seconds yeah 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 you can't display your share to make sure that you have permission uh, i need to have permission uh, that i have permission now it shows that i need to take a permission uh, ict section uh, if you are uh, listening kindly help dr siloka hello oh? sir please click on the uh, same option on the right hand side yeah i have clicked already share option uh, it That's shows connecting it shows uh, share content and uh, there is option of share wait, 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 wait. again again please still repeat uh, share it's and it more shows optimizing the text and images which one do you want to share no. text images or motion and video Mo motion and videos you have to select yeah. that okay motion and videos okay okay and then click uh, share your uh, computer video computer audio yeah yeah this it's uh, going on it's connecting so maybe and uh, open that player in which video is yeah 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 if it is a connecting then uh, because when i share the slide it easily connect and open it but i am trying to open the video it's uh, i don't know um, maybe uh, different settings are needed for that yeah maybe maybe but anyway mean the time uh, i will take the questions and when okay. it's connected and uh, we will see the video please okay. dr indrajit okay So I'll start from the uh, the first question. It is from D Dr. D. N. Bora Khatriya. Uh, he uh, would like to ask which method are you using for embryo transfer, including the procedure. Maybe he would like you to a little explain a little bit on it. Okay, okay. For uh, embryo for transfer. Embryo, yes, yes, yes. For embryo transfer, because uh, the buffalo is the large, so non-surgical embryo transfer method. So in detail, if you go when the embryos is formed in the laboratory. we screen these embryos for the morphology like they have the good inner cell mass and the uh, the perfect normal cells then we use the medium for the transport we use the detail medium detail means a dmm simple dmm i think those are working the cell culture they are aware that the dalpat of modified the medium dmm 10% serum and then when you load the embryos first we uh, uh, load the uh, medium um, containing then the air bubble then the medium with the embryos 
uh, one animal we transfer the one embryos medium and the embryos then again air bubble and then medium and then when we suck it's touched to the the membrane filter at the end so the the straws will be locked after that these embryos will be go uh, to the the farm where our recipient animal are there <coughs> where we synchronize the animals to check their follicular which site ovulation has been occurring or not through the ultrasonography when the after the checking that yes we understand that the right side ovulation has been occurred so these embryos should be transferred into the right horn so for transferring the per rectal palpation has been done uh, i think i think the question asked by uh, uh, bora something I, i forgot the name anyway i think he has been aware of these uh, the veterinary practices in the embryo transfer so per rectal palpation into the rectum and palpate the organs hold the organs and gun has been transferred through the the vagina and reach to the uh, site of the horn and then from the back side is when we have the puller to push to release the embryos into the uh, on the same side after that again we confirm as the release or not and then uh, then this way we do the embryo tra- transfer in buffalo i hope uh, i could able to clear in how we do the embryo transfer so uh, yes okay yes who i mean shall i continue i yeah, heard yeah. another voice also. okay so the second question is from dr b g hall he would like to ask that you mentioned that seven calves were born uh, to cloned embryos and then uh, He, uh, the question is what may be the probable reason that they differ in body conditions and body weight also whether uh, these calves will uh, conceive at the similar age uh, no no these all calves is not in the similar age because each animal when we transfer we transfer not in at the same time we transfer in a month suppose one animal is transferring in the first january example first january maybe on second Some will fifteen January. So these embryos, these calves are born from the October to January. If you look at the slide carefully, where I have mentioned these animals are born. So they have different body weights. Represent is that, uh, or different birth weight, or anything. They have different also gestation length also. And the, because all animals are not the same body weight or same age, these animals same. They obviously will not the same age because they have been transferred. Their embryos have been transferred in the different times. Also that uh, that's why they have the different. Uh, Uh, and uh, and i think if i could add that they may be in different uh, mothers also right so yeah different mother yeah mother. yes obviously different mothers yeah so, another question is uh, from uh, dr ramgopal michael uh, it's a very naive question i think i should have asked it the, in the in the beginning the, and this is my question uh, also that what is the difference between a snamp and a water buffalo So please. Uh, swam yeah. kind of water buffalo and riverine buffalo. Sorry. Riverine and swam buffalo, right? Yes. Water yeah, 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 yeah. Buffalo. I think you are. Uh, this is really, but I think uh, uh, Professor Satish is there. I think he has been he has been pointering into distinguish between the swam buffalo and riverine. But anyway, but I will show the clear cut difference uh, between there uh-huh. is a chromosome difference between these two animals. Our uh, swam buffalo have the forty eight chromosome number. And river and buffalo, which is the Murra, Nil Ravi, they have the 50 chromosome number, right? The second one, the uh, the body structure of the swam buffalo. If you look at these Assamese buffalo, is a, a not exactly the swam because they have the 50 number also, but they have the smaller in size, and the color is not a black. They have the brown color or lighter in color. So that's why. And the swam buffalo mostly in India, they are localized in the northeastern state, as well as 80 percent of the swam buffaloes or Uh, Chinese population or Thailand population or Vietnam population, uh, Myanmar population, they have the large number of these swam buffaloes. And the riverine buffaloes are these buffaloes are they are commercial animals. This one, the riverine buffaloes they have uh, like the Murra, Nili Ravi. It's uh, mm-hmm. mostly localized in China, uh, in India, Pakistan, uh, and Italy, and uh, now in Brazil and Brazil. I think I could able to clear what is the difference between swam and riverine buffalo. Yes, pretty much. So uh, another question from uh, Ramgopal is that uh, what is the impact of cloning uh, on the diversity of the buffalo population? Yes, yes, this is a really a valid and uh, question, and many people have been asked. I must appreciate that he has been raised the 
question in this platform and i have an opportunity to clear why, how can maintain the diversity mm -hmm. uh, there is a the criticism is that cloning will disturb the diversity if you look at the indian population in any context either human population or animal population is the most diverse population in india we have so as i told the buffalo we have the well recognized breeds breeds mean there are particular characters like murra is a well recognized breed and non descriptive population non descriptive means they are buffaloes obviously but they don't have a category to be any breed so our target is to use these animal for the non descriptive population not within the breed population as i told these animal should not be used in haryana and punjab it should be goes to the madhya pradesh chhattisgarh bihar odisha where there is a large number of non descriptive population also the production of these animal will be less so in this if, if we consider also we recommend this so what we are in planning to recommend the clone bull in a one place on one geographical location for two years so two years mean only these animal because when the buffalo mature or they coming with milk it take three years so that there should not be inbreeding as well as to maintain the diversity so that the bull is produced in haryana should be used in south india or somewhere or maybe north eastern type uh, i i think i could able to clear yes uh, so another question uh, it's from me that it may be a very basic question that what what do you think what might be the reason behind the fact that uh, double cytoplasm uh, is better than uh, the single cytoplasm in your hmc cloning yeah 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 yes this is a I'll, again valid question because uh, uh, the, you have been understand the technical aspect of the technology uh, just i will clear uh, to you The, this is the uh, the, uh, the double cytoplasm because we are yeah. doing the micro manipulation in micro manipulation the loss of cytoplasm is very less is less than the 5% or 10% but in handmade cloning because that we are not exactly suck the cytoplasm one we manually cut the oocyte into two part so the loss of cytoplasm in the handmade cloning is more it around the 20% or sometimes 30% or sometimes for the new people it's a 50% so to maintain the cytoplasm have the all the reproducing factor which have required to generate the embryos because so right. is a highly complex and uh, an important cell is the largest body cell and all the all have the transcription factors everything that support the development till the blastocyst and the transcription in it start after the 8 to 16 cell stage so to maintain the transcription factor we use the double cytoplasm so the two cytoplasm means all the component available in the oocyte will support the development until the blastocysts one cytoplasm can also be support but because of the more loss of cytoplasm number of transcription factors or amount of transcription factors is less and that will hamper the development except exactly. okay thank you Thank so you. last question uh, it is from uh, dr dilip uh, he says I, i will just repeat the way he has written hi naresh wonderful webinar one query can this spermatozoa be used for cloning if so how this can be possible thank you uh, this, uh, this is a really important happening but a uh, spermatozoa if you two spermatozoa this is i remember when i was a master student uh, my supervisor again the asked same thing to me can it possible to use the two spermatozoa fuse them together to make them diploid because spermatozoa has a haploid so if you wanted to use them as a diploid uh, i am not sure uh, it might be how it will be work or not and but is a challenge if we could able to use the two spermatozoa first we need to fuse them so we initiate it we remove the tail communication through the tail we remove the tail we try to fuse the two sperm but we unsuccessful and that method has been not going uh, any any way and we uh, which lost the interest in this approach but if we inject the two spermatozoa in one enucleate site i don't know how this be uh, will be uh, work also because of the haploid nature of this sperm it may not be support to embryo development i think this is a debatable question and the uh, need to be studied Okay, uh, so uh, Dr. Dilip, he says thanks to you, Dr. Silogar. And with that, uh, I would request uh, Professor Satish Kumar if he would like to say a few words. Okay, guys, it it has been really wonderful presentation from Nadesh, and it's uh, and for me personally, 
uh, I was going through his acknowledgement slides and three of the pioneers there in the acknowledgement slides, they were my master's class fellows, where we would have done all the secretive things together. Palta, Singla, and Radesha, Manik. So we were literally class fellows in the masters. And we did a couple of courses also together. So that was the real sense. So it was really, I was remembering my NDI days. And it's, it's, it's good to see at the same time, the journey that it has taken long and not these kind of projects, they are not easy projects. And either technically or otherwise, or in terms of the scientific advancement. And one of the very, very important aspect of uh, this project, at least to me from a distance that has demonstrated, and I don't differentiate between CIRB and NDRI because they are all, they started their embryonic development at NDRI and then as a new nucleus has taken place at CIRB to a large extent. It shows the, most of the time, the problem or the way we, and rightly so, we have been projected that Indians are very difficult people to work together. But this is one success story that has shown that people have done away with their egos, their level, seniority, juniority, and then they have worked together for the cause. And results are here for everybody to see. And not only that they are my class fellows, I was associated with them as a as their reviewer of the project for four or five years, and I used to go from time to time and see through and what a bit I could contribute to the efforts. So thanks very much, Naresh. It has been really, really wonderful, the quality of science that's getting done, and it's very, very pleasing. And I, I take this opportunity to ask one or two questions, if our organizers permit with respect to time. So can I, can I go ahead, uh, Indrajit? Yes, sir. Uh, OK. So, uh, Naresh, one question is that your Assamese buffalo, was it a swamp animal to, uh, that was cloned? Chromosome wise, was it a swamp animal? Is Naresh able to hear? Hello? Oh, sorry, mine is on mute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah. Uh, the question was that the Assamese animal which you have cloned, was it a swamp animal? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Assamese buffalo we clone is a not okay. a swamp because we uh, done the karyotyping. Uh, okay. We thought because uh, we believe that in Assam there are all swamp animals, but this is not the case. Okay. Some animals are not a swamp. So we yeah. done karyotyping and uh, these animals have the 50 number. In fact, in fact, in Assam there are a lot many river buffaloes. Yeah. In fact, wild, our recent yeah. studies tells that the wild buffaloes in, in Kaziranga and Manas sanctuary, they are. They are river type, they are not swamp, by the way. No, no, no. no. This is also not a swamp. My question, my question was related to this, that when you are using two cytoplasm for cloning, mm -hmm. so whether the question of heteroplasmy will interfere with your success rate or survival of the the embryo, or, or what, 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 what do you think? You probably, you might not have done experiments in that aspect, yeah, but yeah. what is that or is what's worth pursuing that when you are taking in any case, when you are taking two, two cytoplasm sources, mm -hmm. then there are two kind of mitochondria and they will be heteroplasmic. Yes, yes. So whether that's going to affect and to a large, to, to a wider extent, if you are taking mitochondria of real buffalo and genome of swamp buffalo, okay. when then, then what happens to the incompatibility of the, so is it, what's your opinion there? Yeah, so, so I will start. Thank you, sir, uh, uh, for, uh, encouraging us just i would like to highlight here so we don't have sir right at the moment we don't have data how this mitochondria has passed me but now we have seven clones from the one animal earlier we have one or two clones from one animal so now in this in this project we are working on that aspect so how okay. the mitochondria will affect so we are going to do the whole you know mitochondrial sequencing in these okay. animals and to study the mitochondria hidden level when these animals are born but i would like to add here again sir important aspect when the artificial insemination done so from the mitochondria mostly origin from the female side, okay, so from the maternal origin. Even though if, if I, I may, maybe one or two percent or maybe ten percent chances of that these animals are heteroplasmic, I'm, I'm not sure because we don't have data yet, and we are going to do this one uh, heteroplasmic level in the animal. If these considering as these animals are heteroplasmic, but the semen from these animal when we use to inseminate these the uh, the progen is produced, they have the mitochondria from the maternal origin. So we okay. maternal origin. So we hope that 
this will not be much much more big issue for us but scientifically obviously we need to show that are these animals are really heteroplasmic or not so on this aspect we are working and uh, next generation sequencing in whole genome mitochondria we are going to do in these animals and when we have data i think we will share uh, with you as some those uh, this is a valid question in every platform everybody or most of the time the uh, the experts who have understand the technology they ask the same question so now we need to uh, we will work on uh, we are working on this and maybe we will have data yeah the, the, my 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 concern was not primarily from the donor nuclei or the cell which is donating the nuclei because the yes. there there the number of mitochondria molecules they are going to be much less than the two side right so, so probability wise that will be okay and then if there is ectoplasm it will maybe diluted out but when you are using two sources of cytoplasm and then putting them together then the probability is that probably 50 50 any of these they may contribute theoretically at least so that's something you should now in the, the if i have the prerogative and ask one more question which is now uh, what is the status of the es cells now from buffaloes do we still nearby or still we are far off i i think we lost your voice hello hello yes, yeah uh, now i am audible yeah yeah now it's okay yeah. So uh, my... yes cell es cell culture i have been initiated i think uh, you have been expert for that project uh, as i recall old days uh, so we initiated that time at ndri to generate the indonesian stem cell uh, from buffaloes uh, but uh, currently we don't have the well characterized established embryonic stem cells uh, available in the frozen state so okay. we still how, need how as a relation to that that question if i have to let's say if i clone clone an animal i got the blastocyst and from the blastocyst i develop some cell line it doesn't matter whether you call it es cell like or es cell line or may not be es cell at all so what is the probability that i can establish from the blastocyst a cell line mm-hmm. and then again use the nuclei from those cells and to again to clone it So have you done those kind of experiments, or if not, then what's your yeah, answer? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, we done that experiment. Uh, we also published that paper where the different cells, like embryonic stem cell, one calf is already born from embryonic stem cell. But the problem with the embryonic stem cell is that, sir, is the maintenance in the laboratory or generation is a tedious and long process. Lot of investment you need to have, and you need to maintain special growth factor. Obviously, the re- if you look at the reprogramming ability of the embryonic stem cell will be the more. but again the embryonic stem cell buffalo they are in clumps clumps mean they are in dome shape and tight colonies to so making them again the single cell uh, like like in mouse and other animals uh, the embryonic stem cell easy to single and from a single cell they generate the colonies uh, uh, that, paper I have, that paper i have seen okay yes, that was long ago that was long ago right yes long ago long ago yes recently yeah, it, sir, we have not been done uh, to use these uh, cell as a in fact, now i can tell now i can tell non confidentially i was the referee for that paper many many years ago but the, yeah. <laughs> but the senior senior before yeah okay. but the point is my question is that from a clone embryo uh-huh. when you have got the blastocyst have you tried to derive cell lines from that blastocyst from a cloned no sir we have not tried to derive the uh, embryonic stem cell lines from clone embryos but ndri has tried to derive the embryonic stem cell lines from the clone embryos and they characterize uh, one or two student was there uh, the when i was also student uh, okay. at ndri uh, they tried to derive the embryonic stem cell line but this nuclear transfer embryonic stem cell line not been used as a donor to produce the clone animal okay okay maybe sometime we will talk in details i am not worried much or i am not uh... thinking that you should be successful driving embryonic stem cells till such time you can establish a cell line from yeah, yeah. an embryo that's good enough for me if i can take the nuclei or these cells can replicate in, in vitro and i can take the nuclei and use them for cloning etc etc we may be we'll talk about it now i was liking a perspective article and that never got written so in that context maybe we will talk later now again so without taking much time now so thanks very much and come to convey my regards to all all your laboratory me- leaders and members and particularly dr prem singh dr prem singh and it is really really pleasure that you accepted our invitation
and it's, it shows the for the youngsters the quality of science that gets done that's really amazing and it's very very pleasant for me to see thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you for our support over to the organizers and thank you by the biotechnology department and henceforth there is a one thing that uh, message from the vice chancellor's office that when you invite us to give you know, a wake up to the vice chancellor along so that you want so that next time you can take care of it. so indrajit and ravi and and ram gopal over to you Uh, thank you professor sir we will uh, we will uh, in the next uh, webinars we will keep this in mind so uh, due to bg bg schedule uh, honorable vice chancellor he will not be able to grace the event so we will miss his presence but uh, next time we will keep in uh, plan in the advance so now i request uh, dr indrajit kaur to extend vote of thanks hello over to you in the gym. thank you ram thank you am i audible yes so thank you everyone actually so it's time for uh, formal vote of thanks and to acknowledge all the people whose efforts has actually uh, they have been uh, you know the people have been working behind the scenes to make this event a uh, possible so first of all uh, on behalf of the department of biotechnology i uh, i in the jeet kaur i uh, extend my um, appreciations and uh, thanks to dr uh, naresh silokar for sparing his precious time and delivering this uh, enlightening lecture we have learned a lot dr silokar for from your lecture and uh, i i think everybody will agree that it had been a very wonderful uh, presentation today this lecture has definitely deepened our understanding on buffalo cloning so thank you again we would uh, i think uh, you know we we'll, uh, we will take this liberty that we will call you again so to listen to your uh, new achievements in the field so next i would like to extend uh, my sincere thanks to the ict team especially to uh, mr amit and mr pankaj so they have been uh, instrumental uh, in putting up this uh, webinar and uh, taking all the nitigities taking care of all the nitigities finally we uh, 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 the participants we, uh, more than 80 participants were uh, they were present uh, today in our seminar so it would have not been possible um, without the listeners so thank you everybody thank you so much and now i request ict team to play the national anthem and i request everybody uh, to please stand up uh, in respect to the national anthem thank you ict team national anthem please नायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कड़ बंगा भिंज हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाधा जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे with this i think we close today's uh, program thank you everyone hope to see you soon again thank you thank you so much